Hi, I'm Rob from b &H, and in this video we're going to explore lavalier microphones. We talked a little bit about lavs in part two of our audio for DSLR series, but today we're going to go a bit deeper into the subject, compare some of the various models we offer at b &H, and listen to how they sound. Basically, a lavalier, also called a lav or a lav, is a compact, unobtrusive microphone that is usually clipped to your subject's clothing a few inches from his or her mouth or possibly concealed in the subject's clothing or hair. You see them all the time in television and video production. We use this Audio-Technica AT899, for example, in almost every video we do here at B&H. Now, to be clear, most sound professionals will prefer to use a boom-mounted shotgun mic to record audio during a scene. And if used properly, a shotgun mic will often yield more natural sound, and it also helps you to avoid the clothes rustling noises that sometimes happen when you use lav mics. In fact, some productions use both types of mics to cover all the bases. When we shoot our Real Exposures videos here at B&H, for example, we use both. In our case, the lavs provide the primary audio and the shotgun functions as a backup. So if shotguns generally sound better, why use a lav? Well, one basic advantage is that when you attach a lav to your subject, you remove the need to follow them around with a boom-mounted shotgun. Obviously, that's a big plus in situations where you don't have a sound man available to operate the boom mic. Even if you have a sound man, it may be impractical for the boom operator to move the shotgun between multiple subjects. Also, if you're doing a wide shot, getting a shotgun close enough to your subjects to get good sound means the mic may be visible in the shot, so a concealed lav might be a better solution. In addition, a lav mic is usually positioned fairly close to your subject's mouth and often features a presence peak or frequency boost around the 6 to 8 kilohertz area, which means it can yield a very present, close mic sound that can be ideal for dialogue. Now, there are two basic types of lavalier microphone setups, wired and wired. Wireless. Wired labs like this AT899 plug into a power module that then connects directly to a recording device. The power module will accept phantom power from your recording device and pass that on to power the microphone. In addition, some power modules like this one for the 899 will also give you the option of powering the mic with a battery, in this case a 1.5 volt AA. Wired lavaliers are best suited for videos such as the one we're recording now where the subject and camera are stationary. The wired connection will generally yield better audio quality than what you'll get with wireless systems and you won't have to worry about radio frequency interference leaking into your audio. Wireless labs, on the other hand, are wireless, surprise. The microphone plugs into a transmitter that powers it and sends the audio to a receiver via a radio frequency. These devices allow you to choose the operating frequency within a certain range, so obviously you'll need to make sure the transmitter and receiver are set to the same frequency. The receiver is plugged into your camera or audio recorder. Wireless labs are quite versatile and are ideal for run-and-gun shooters or situations where the subject or videographer is moving around. So there's some background on lavaliers. Let's listen to a few different wired and wireless lav mics. I've removed the AT899 that I was using earlier, and now you're hearing me mic'd with the Shure SM93, an inexpensive but very solid lav mic. Like the other wired mics we're looking at today, the SM93 is a small Electret mic that comes with an XLR adapter, clip, and windscreen. Like many labs, the SM93 has an omnidirectional polar pattern, which means that it picks up sound equally from all sides. That helps to minimize changes in volume when your subject turns his or her head. You heard the AT899 lav earlier in this video, so let's take a look at another mic from Audio-Technica, the AT898. Now, this is a cardioid lav, so unlike omni-pattern mics, it picks up signal directly in front of the capsule and tends to reject sound from the other directions. Now, on the one hand, that means you may get a volume dip if your subject turns away from the microphone, like I'm doing right now. On the other hand, it picks up less background sound, which means it's a good choice for recording in noisier environments. This is the Sony ECM44B. Unlike the other wired mics we're looking at, this microphone does not accept phantom power, but a single AA battery will power the mic for 5,000 hours. The solid sound quality it delivers at a relatively low cost makes the ECM44B a popular lav for budget-conscious productions. 
The final wired lavalier we're checking out today is the Countryman B3. This omnidirectional miniature mic is about the size of the end of a matchstick and comes in a variety of colors. Its small size, resistance to moisture, and design make it possible to hide this mic underneath clothing or in a subject's hair or even on their skin. The B3 features three different frequency caps that provide flat, bright, and very bright frequency enhancement respectively, which gives this lav some additional versatility. In addition, the Countryman B3 comes in two sensitivities, one designed for louder vocals like singing or theatrical performances, and the other optimized for general speech like dialogue or lecturing. Okay, so you've heard a few wired lavalier mics. Now let's take a listen to a few wireless lavalier systems. All the wireless labs that we're listening to today include the microphone itself, the transmitter, and receiver. This particular system is the Audio-Technica Pro 88W, and it's a VHF, or very high frequency, system. VHF systems tend to be less expensive and are more efficient with batteries than UHF, or ultra high frequency, systems. The components in the Pro 88W feature solid plastic housing, and like all the receivers we're looking at today, this one is camera mountable. This is a comparatively inexpensive system, delivering solid audio quality, but one of the compromises at this price point is that you only have two selectable frequencies to choose from. That's not a lot of wiggle room if you have interference problems. The system doesn't include a plug-in transmitter, but with the optional CP8306 cable, you can plug an XLR mic into the body pack transmitter instead of the lav. This Sony UWP-V6 is a UHF wireless system. UHF systems are less likely to have radio interference because they use higher frequencies that are less common to other devices. Although, should there be interference, the UWP series offers 188 frequencies to choose from so you can find an alternative. In addition to its durable metal construction, both the body pack transmitter and the plug-in XLR transmitter feature a mic line switch that allows you to transmit either the included lavalier mic or line level sources for added versatility. You can also choose between two different RF power output levels. The 5 milliwatt setting is for indoor simultaneous multi-channel operation, while the 30 milliwatt is intended for outdoor long range use. A maximum of 16 systems can be used at one time. Now we're checking out the popular Sennheiser EW100 ENG G3. Sennheiser microphones can be found on many productions, and the G3 lav system is an industry standard. The system includes the ME2 omnidirectional microphone, but you can swap it out for another Sennheiser lav, say the ME4, if you prefer to use a cardioid mic. Another option is the VT500 from Voice Technologies. It's flat with a very thin cable, making it easy to conceal. If you simply need to replace the ME2 lav, consider the Sonal OLM2, which is a very similar lav and an excellent value. The transmitter and receiver are made of durable metal enclosures and feature a whopping 1,680 UHF frequencies to choose from. The body pack transmitter accepts both mic and line inputs via the 1 8 inch mini jack. The LED display shows information like the comprehensive menu, signal status, and frequency information. Three levels of optional pilot tone squelch help to reduce interference. Pilot Tone Squelch, which the Sony UWP system also has, by the way, is especially effective at eliminating RF interference when the transmitter is turned off. There's also a compander on board to help deliver clearer sound. Like many wireless system packages, in addition to the body pack transmitter, this EW100G3 system also includes an XLR transmitter that allows you to plug in any standard dynamic mic with a 3-pin XLR connection and transmit signal from that mic wirelessly. This kind of setup is ideal for videographers shooting news or red carpet style interviews. Shure are known for making excellent microphones, and their FP wireless system is a very solid performer. The FP1 transmitter and FP5 portable receiver are plastic, but very lightweight and very easy to use. One-touch automatic frequency selection locates an open frequency from the 960 available, and automatic transmitter setup instantly syncs the transmitter to the receiver frequency using an infrared beam. In addition to the WL183 lav mic, this package also includes the FP3 plug-in transmitter that allows you to plug in an XLR mic, either battery powered or a dynamic mic like this ElectroVoice RE50B. The power LED alerts you when your batteries are low, and the LCD screen also shows battery life as well as group and channel settings. Sure indicates up to 20 systems can be used simultaneously. 
One final thing to consider are hidden LAVs. We briefly touched upon this with the Countryman B3. Lavalier mics like the Tram TR50 plug into wireless systems and can be hidden under clothes or even wigs. This makes them ideal for theater, television, and film productions. In this demo, we have the TR50 plugged into the Sony UWP system and hidden under my collar using the included vampire clip. The TR50 is also available for other wireless systems, including Sennheiser, Audio-Technica, and Electrosonics, and can also be purchased hardwired to an XLR connection if you'd like. There are a couple of somewhat more expensive alternatives that while we're not demoing them today, I do want to mention. The Sankin COS11D also comes in several different configurations for different wireless systems, delivers great sound, and is very easily concealed. DPA also makes outstanding microphones. This one is the 4061, and it's ideal for vocals and acoustic string instruments, and it comes in several color options and various sensitivity levels. Two capsule protection grids are supplied. One is a high boost grid that creates a boost at 12 kilohertz, while the other is a soft boost grid that gives a more subtle boost in the 8 to 20 kilohertz range. So hopefully that gives you a better idea of how lavalier mic solutions can improve your video productions. To reiterate, wired lavaliers are a good choice for stationary in-studio productions. For more flexibility of movement, consider wireless labs. VHF labs offer a cheaper solution for budget productions, while UHF systems are less susceptible to radio interference. As you increase your toolbox of video gear, lavalier mics offer a solid investment that can improve your audio. I'm Rob from B&H, and thanks for watching. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, B&H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.